Hey guys, this is Ben at Rust Sound Tech Support. SCSC5 programming software is not typically used these days, at least not with our current generation MCA series products. However, you can use the latest version of this software to do project and programming changes for the newer MCAs. And you might actually need to, especially if you're looking to save bank and preset information for the ST1 AM FM tuner. You'll also definitely be using SCSC5 if you're working on legacy systems like the MCA C3 and C5. So I'd like to just show you how you start SCSC5 up. I'll just give you the, the 101 on getting the software and getting it installed. So number one, you first need to download the software package itself. That's available for free on Rust Sound's website. You will find this under the Rust Sound dealer portal. So you must have a dealer account for access to this. If you are not a dealer, you can still get into the dealer portal, but you must register a free account. So make sure you do what you need to first, and then you can get in. Now for Rust Sound certified installers, you will find the latest version of SCSC5 under the Rust Sound certified installer category. This would allow you to modify changes using SCS software with the MCA66, MCA88, and MCA88X. If you are not a Rust Sound certified installer, you are not able to access this material. This is exclusive only to certified dealers. You can still, however, get version 6 of SCSC5, which is located on the MCA slash C series category. And that's where you can find SCSC5 version 6. That would allow you to work on systems like the MCA C3 and MCA C5. So anyways, go ahead and download the appropriate file that you need and it will come in a zipped format so you must extract this if you don't know how to extract well I'm gonna show you just simply right click on the thing and extract it it's really not that hard so we extract it and we have a folder I'll bring my folder into view I've already done this open up your folder and you'll find a few contents in here and you will need to run the setup installer this only takes a few moments you shouldn't need to touch anything else in here just the installer and once that software is installed you then have SCS C5 ready to rock and roll double click this icon to open the software up and by the way this software is only available on Windows sorry Apple users not available for you Windows only anyways launch this software and you get this little splash screen here now I am using SCS C5 version 7 so in this drop down menu I do have access to some of the newer products but if you are running older version software you're only going to see the Xtreme X5, the C3, and the C5. But that's okay because that's probably all you're working on anyways if you're looking at this video. So to start on this splash screen we first need to make a few changes. I actually have an MCA66 here so we're gonna do a read from on that but for anyone using a C3 or C5 you will select the appropriate device of your choice in the drop down menu. You then have the option of choosing if the controller is present or not, which if you're managing project information, of course you want the controller to be connected. Now you have two options here. USB, this would require that you connect a USB cable from your laptop or PC and plug the other end of your USB cable into the front port on the MCA C3 or C5. This is a USB-A to USB type B cable, commonly used in printers. So one end is your most you know, common USB cable that you're familiar with. If you say USB, that's what pops in your mind, that rectangular port. USB, um, I believe it is type A, maybe I'm getting them mixed up, but the other end is a square port. So just make sure you have the right cable. This is always a good fallback method if you don't have your product on the network for whatever reason. Um, or maybe you have uh, recently changed your network and you can't access the product on the network. So you would need a USB for that. The other option is Ethernet. You just select Ethernet here and then you'd input the host IP address for your MCA in question, which I'm going to show you with my MCA66. So let's go ahead and select MCA66. Now with the MCA66 and 88, there's no USB method option. This is strictly controlled and operated and programmed through the web. So we won't have any type of USB option here whatsoever, at least not in SCSC5. And if you're programming an MCA C, um, excuse me, an MCA series controller, which again is the 66 or 88, you're likely going to be doing that through web config anyways. But as I mentioned, this is a good fallback method, especially if you are working with an ST1 AM FM tuner, because this is, as of right now, the only way you can save presets and, and uh, favorites and banks and, 
and the things like that. So you're going to go ahead and enter the IP address in, in the field here. And you can use the setup wizard if you are making a new project. That kind of just holds your hand as you're starting a new project. But we're going to turn that off. And in fact, we're not actually doing the new project. Um, and before I read from, let's look at these anyways. So create a new project. We'll actually create a brand new template of the MCA of choice that you're working on up here. This would allow you to start from scratch a new project file. And that's actually pretty useful, even with the new systems, if you want. If you want to make a, um, you know, a dummy template of the system you're building or designing, so you can actually see all your programming work in front of you before you actually go out to uh, install the product on game day. So that, that can be definitely beneficial. Either way, that's created a new project. And with the setup wizard checked off, this will essentially hold your hand in, in setting a new project up. The next, option, uh, the next option is open a saved project. So if you already have a backup or saved project file on your computer here, you can actually open that up and, and restore it. Third option is read from device. This will allow us to extract and pull out the project information and the device we're actually looking to communicate with. And then we can also choose to open a recent project if we have a few projects saved on our computer that would allow us to do that. Cancel, we'll just close this out. So let's venture on and let's click read from device. This is the IP address for my MCA 66. So we're going to click this. And now it is extracting the project information. I have actually programmed this MCA 66 already within web config and it's nothing major. Just a few things I've done just for demonstration purposes for some other videos we've been working on. And it will start loading this information. I'm going to just pause the video real quick. This can take up to a few minutes to extract your project info, so we'll be right back with you. And there we have it. The project is now loaded in front of us. So now we're in SCSC5 and we're actually looking at the project information for my MC66. From here I can modify pretty much everything under the sun. I can rename my rooms, I can set up my sources, I can uh, modify my banks for the ST1 AM FM tuner. And when I'm satisfied with the changes, I can go to tools and choose write to device. This will write it back to the device. And then we can view all those changes on the keypads or the app. You can also save and back up a project file as well. I would definitely always recommend the first time you're going into a system that you haven't yet looked at, maybe you haven't worked on it yourself yet, or maybe you are the owner of the system in your house and you're looking to make a few changes yourself. Definitely once you get into it, save and back up your project file. If you do make a mistake or something happens or you're instructed to factor reset it as part of a troubleshooting step, you can then make sure that all of your information is saved prior to you bombing the project information and starting over. This is just a general walkthrough of how to launch the software, so I'm not going to go in depth on actually how to program it through this. For that kind of details, be sure to check out some of our other videos if they're available or reach out to Rust Sound Technical Support or your local Rust Sound dealer if you're not a dealer yourself. Thank you for joining us today. Everyone take care.